This is the Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast. Hey, family. Welcome to Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran. Thank you for listening today. I am feeling so blessed and highly favored as I look around to see all that a mighty God has done for me. I especially enjoy taking in the sights, even the crisp orange, brown, and red leaves of fall. Such variety forces me to realize that my eyesight is invaluable and I must have my eye surgery sooner than later because I love seeing all of the beauty that God has created, all with which he surrounded us. But even beyond my sight, my vision is of utmost importance. You see, sight is the ability to physically behold or the faculty to see, for which I praise God every day. But vision, vision is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom, the act or power of imagination. Even God's word reminds us in Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keep the law, happy is he. In other words, one must have vision or he finds no reason to push forward, nothing to believe in, not a single task or destination worth running for or profound enough to make haste towards. When we conceive, believe, and write the vision, We exercise certain faith that promotes the hand of God to come into agreement. A point at which one's faith chases his or her own destiny and compels God to do all that he promised he would. Remember, if you can supply the faith, God will do the work. Genuine vision of a better future is essential to creating a better life one step and one day at a time. When I believe that better is possible and I envision better ahead, I strive for better right now. I anticipate better. I prepare for better. I look for better and position myself because better is coming. Before we strive for better and see fit to work for improved conditions, And yes, before we can realize the promises of a faithful God and his word, we must be able to see ourselves in God's plan for our lives, a better future and even a better present because vision begets faith. If I can see it in my mind's eye, I can believe in my heart that it will come to pass. As long as you hold the vision in your heart and in your head, you become able to strive and work towards that which you can see long before it is made manifest in the earth realm where others can see it as well. We must see it before we can see it. In other words, we must see it by faith before we can see it by sight. You can see by faith as we must walk by faith and not by sight. In Habakkuk, the third chapter, second and third verses. And the Lord answered me, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry. Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. You see, having vision gives us cause to not only walk by faith in God for the vision, but once we believe it in our hearts, see it in our mind's eye, write it down and make it clear, as Habakkuk has so eloquently stated We will be able to run faster with it, run harder towards it, and work more diligently for it each time we reread it. It is apparent that Habakkuk knew 
that we would endure chaotic times and even live among vision snatchers and dream killers. Those who continue to present reason after reason and excuse after excuse in the carnality of logic as to why our dreams are so foolish or impossible, why our ideas are far-fetched and naturally incomprehensible. There are some who will look you square in the eyes to wholeheartedly remind you of what cannot be done to tell you of all that you simply cannot do. And many are accurate. Yes, I said they're right. I cannot do the task or achieve the goals that my vision beholds. But God, the one who so fearfully and wonderfully designed me, he is faithful and well able to fulfill my vision. The same vision that Habakkuk encourages us to write down and make it plain. Now, why did he say make it plain? Because clarity removes all wonderings, distortions, and even rivals doubt. Total conviction and surrender comes from being sure and even certain of this vision. Not for an omniscient God but for each spiritual being having our human experiences as we dare to identify and run with our visions. If only I continue to believe. God's word has advised that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So then my vision, our vision activates our faith. And God's word said, if we only had faith, the size of a mustard seed. We could speak to the mountains and they would obey. Know that your vision is necessary to find your vocation. It is that thing that is destined to touch destiny and fuel your faith. I want to impress upon you today, your vision, your vision keeps you growing in God and pressing forward even in the midst of life's many struggles, obstacles, and setbacks. Vision compels you to stand strong, to speak to your situation, to trust God even when you cannot trace Him. And then it gives you hope, a drive in your stride, and running in your feet. No longer should you keep your vision to yourself. Rather, write it out and make it clear. It matters not if it does not happen quickly. Your writing it and speaking it introduces it to the atmosphere. And although no one else may know, God sees you. He hears you and he knows all about you. The best part is by your faith and the trust that you place in him after being simply obedient writing the vision, and making it plain. God gets all of the glory. You see, the very act of obedience that you show by writing the vision that was once only conceived in your heart and empowered in your mind propels God to act, to move in your favor and for your good. Each time you read it for yourself, It gives you greater momentum to run with your vision. Though it tarry, it may very well take time. Wait for it because it will surely come and it will not disappoint. As indicated, I am facing difficulties with my eyesight. Although I thank God that I can see. And these cataracts are a temporary setback. A matter that is correctable praise God, in just a matter of scheduling and time. My sight will improve. But the news that rings more loudly in my soul is that there is nothing, nothing wrong with my vision. It is even within my vision that I have faith that God will see me through and bless me with excellent eyesight in the very near future, even. For those who know me, I currently keep a magnifying glass in my purse. I travel with it to ensure that I'm able to see the fine print. 
But God is preparing to bless me with 2020 vision. That is sight to go with my ongoing 2020 vision. That is faith and hope in him on purpose with purpose. Yes, I've written the vision about my sight and my faith driven vision. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, for those who are the called according to his purpose. So even when your sight becomes a little dim and you may not be able to see your way clearly or even see as well as you used to, just know that God responds to your vision, which moves us light years beyond our sight as we walk by faith and not by sight. So don't ever hesitate to write the vision and make it plain. Read it often so that you can walk and even run with it. Although it is for an appointed time, wait for it because it will speak and surely it will come to pass. Know that God is faithful to complete the good work he has begun in you and in us. Remember, without a vision, the people perish. I urge each of you, check your vision today. Because even where there might not be sight, there must be vision. Write the vision and make it plain so it will speak in Jesus' name. Not only what you say or how you do, but all the promises God has made to you. So that each and every time you read, the vision ensures you will succeed. Remember, be it great or if it is small, God is able to have you recover it all. Those things and matters, the enemy's stronghold. In our weakness, God shows grace, mercy, and plenteous favor untold. Yet God's word and his promises are firm and they are true. If he said it, he will perform it. Our God will come through. Has not even entered into the hearts of man. All that God has purposed for us in his holiest of plans. Eyes have not seen as by sight we make decisions. The riches that God has laid up for those who in obedience write the vision. See, there's nothing wrong with those who choose the spiritual fight. So that the whole armor of God is worn in the power of his might. Yes, make your every boast especially strong in the Lord, but to lose your own vision is a poor decision. We simply cannot afford. Vision leads, guides, propels, and drives with clarity of what is true so that we set goals and run till our race is won. He to all we each must do. Know that the vision is for an appointed purpose in time, but God's grace and mercy, sprinkled with favor, is wrapped in his love so kind. Wait patiently for it. The vision will certainly come. Our God is so faithful to complete all the good work he's begun. No limit to our Father, no matter too large, no blessings ever expire. Write the vision, it will speak. Strengthen all areas where we're weak, it will uplift encourage and inspire well family this is number 126 of faith family and fundamentals with Fran I urge you to write the vision and make it plain then read it daily as often as you think about it Habakkuk said the vision is for an appointed time which clearly means it may not happen, show up, or bloom to fruition when we think it should. But in God's perfect timing, the vision will come to pass and it will not disappoint. He said it will speak. So listen for it. Look for it. Wait for it. Hold on to it because it will be made manifest if we believe God for it. Trust in his omnipotence and expect it. You see, when a woman is pregnant with child, she just knows that someday after 37 to 40 weeks of gestation, she will give birth to her baby. 
So she waits in great anticipation of the promise. So it is with our vision. We know that it will someday become a living, breathing reality. Surely it will speak. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will come and the vision will not disappoint. I pray that each of you write the vision that God has so meticulously placed in your hearts. Because where there is no vision, the people perish. After all, vision enacts our faith and faith hastens the hand of God. I pray blessings and favor over each of you. On a separate note, please family, if voting is going on in your area, get out and vote. Vote early, if at all possible as it makes good sense in utilizing and respecting your valuable time. Even if it does not appeal to you at this moment, remember, it is your civic duty and a God-given right that was made available to us through the blood, sweat, and tears of countless others. So in honor of our late ancestors and people who fought diligently Some even made the ultimate sacrifice. We must exercise our right to vote. Make the decision that will best serve your children, your families, community, and both personal needs and desires. Know that your vote is your voice and a direct extension of your vision. God bless each of you. Please don't forget to say something on my Facebook Instagram, or Twitter page. You can listen to me on Amazon Music or YouTube as well. I welcome your questions, comments, critiques, and suggestions on topics you'd like to explore. Who knows? You might just end up being a guest on an upcoming broadcast. Remember, I'm just a regular girl navigating this diverse world. I'm looking forward to each of you. Until then, take care of yourself each other and stay blessed. The Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Log on to castropolis.net.